Praise the Lord. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one whose death, burial, and resurrection we celebrate in this awesome season. I just thank God that indeed the grave could not hold our Savior down. In fact, that's what Jesus said to them, you know. That's what he said. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be put to death, but death is not going to have the final say in my life. That he is going to be resurrected. And just as he said, come on, even though they had rolled the, the stone over the mouth of the borrowed cave where they had stored his body, when the time came hallelujah the angels rolled that stone away and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he rose triumphant from the grave from death from hell with the keys to prove what he had done and we celebrate that is because he lives the songwriter says we can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know my God, he holds the future and I know God is holding our hands. We thank God for Resurrection Sunday. We thank God that dead things can live again. We thank God that because he died and rose again, death would not have the final say in our lives as well. And for that, we shout a mighty hallelujah. I'm excited today. I am excited. I'm excited. Jesus' resurrection makes all the difference. It makes all the difference to your life, my life. It makes all the difference to our faith in a God who lives forevermore. That has the power over death. The worst enemy. We serve a savior who reigns triumphant over death. He tasted it for all men. And he shows us that he has the power, my God, over death. And I celebrate this, this, this day. Amen. Wherever you are, hallelujah. Welcome to another program of Living by the Word, where we encourage you to apply the principles of the Word of God to your everyday life. I am yours truly, Pastor Eloise Hines of Destiny Empowerment global ministries we are currently housed at the mason hall community center on sunday mornings we are there from 9 a.m as we worship together as we encourage each other in the lord and we also meet on tuesdays at the, the conference room in tech lowlands tech conference room at 6 p.m for bible study and prayer we've been having a tremendous time we are talking about how do you live on the earth as citizens of heaven and as we go through the scriptures i'm saying we are all being challenged to live the life that god wants us to live now amen and god has just been so good to us i'm celebrating all of you who join me whether it's sunday whether it's tuesday and we have just been having a tremendous 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 time and it's i can't wait for us to meet and get into the word and all the questions that are asked and god has just been helping us Amen. So that's Destiny Empowerment Global Ministries on Sundays. We are at the Mason Hall Community Center from 9 a.m. And on Tuesdays, we are at the Tech U Conference Room in Lowlands from 6 p.m. to just about 8 p.m. Amen. Amen. So let us pray. Father, thank you for your people. We declare them blessed. And we declare this word that going forth, Father, is going to challenge, it's going to change, it's going to transform lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I have been talking to us a little bit about uh, uh, to the unknown God, a passage of scripture in Acts chapter 19 with Paul when he went to Athens. And I want to continue from right there today. So let me get into the word of God in Acts chapter 17 from verse 22, when Paul ended up in Athens after the persecution that he encountered in Berea. Yes, from the Jews that were in Thessalonica. He is there in Athens waiting on um, Timothy and Silas. And this is what he sees. Verse 22 of Acts chapter 17 says, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship. 
him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, he dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and had made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Verse 28 says, for in this God we live, Hallelujah, oh, we exist in this God. We move, we have our very being as certain also as your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much dead as we are the offspring of God, he says we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device and the times of this ignorance God winked at <laughs> but now commanded all men everywhere to repent because he had appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained whereof he had given assurance unto all men in that he had raised him from the dead. He's speaking about that day when judgment will take place of the earth by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is our risen savior. Amen. I am excited today. I want to talk to us again about the unknown God. This thing that Paul saw in Athens that, uh, that his spirit began to be stirred when he was waiting on Silas and Timothy and he saw all these objects that they were worshipping all their objects of worship and he saw an altar to the unknown God and I'm saying to us so many of us today are still worshipping the unknown God because well let me say this to us there are many of us in our heads let me say this hallelujah the God in our head is not the God in scripture. There are many of us who would conduct ourselves in a certain way and say, well, God is okay with that. We live in a society now where people just live any old crazy way and they tell you, don't judge. You must just tolerate everything. Come on, God is love. God ain't, ain't mad at you for that. I'm saying today that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if God says it is, sin and he's going to judge the world for it then that is what we believe that is what we preach it doesn't matter what laws are being passed it doesn't matter whether high ranking officials whether judges whether lawyers whether presidents whether persons of status says otherwise my god if god says it is sin if the god of the bible means it is sin you cannot worship what you do not know. And I'm saying to you, give us the opportunity to declare who this God is. I'm saying to you, just as we read today, there is a day of judgment that is coming. My God, the Bible tells us that the books are going to be open and God is going to hold us accountable for everything that we've done whilst we are here in the earth. There is such a day coming and God is wanting us and warning us and saying to us now, there are some stuff we've been doing uh, in our ignorance. God may have winked at it. He didn't approve it. But now there is so much information for us to know this God that he's calling us to repent. 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 Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from those activities. Turn from those lifestyles that you know is against the very will of God for your life. Turn from the lies of the enemy. Turn from the way of damnation. Turn from the pit of hell and run to Almighty God who has come that you can have life and have it to the full. 
I'm saying to you this, the instructions that God have given you, it is for your own good. It's because one day he's going to come and he's going to judge this earth. He's going to judge what you've done. And there is no lawmaker that's going to stand on your side when the judge of all the earth gets ready to pound his gavel. My God. Let's not get carried away with what's happening in the world. Many of us are worshipping an unknown God. If we think that God has changed his mind about sin, then we are worshipping an unknown God. We don't yet know God. I want you to look at God's track record. How he dealt, eh, even with Adam. God told them, do not eat of the fruit of this tree. Because the day that you eat it thereof, you will die. They thought that they knew God. Come on. And Adam went and ate the fruit that was given to him by his wife Eve. And God says, hey, what's happening? I warned you. I spoke to you about this. If you do this, that's going to be the consequence on what happened. The Bible said because of one man, sin entered the world and death has passed on all men because of one man's disobedience to the word of God. God is serious about what he says and we have to give an account one day for it. We are not going to escape. And those of us who know to do right and don't do it, we're going to be beaten with many stripes. Those of us who are compromising and believe that God understands because of his mercies, because of his goodness, there is a day of reckoning that's coming. There's a day that's, rec that's coming. Come on, there is a day coming. If you just study the God of the Bible, you realize God is love. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness, but he is a God that must punish sin. And let me say this to you, sin is not what you determine. Come on, sin is what God's word says it is. And we must obey all of it or none of it. It is sin. Amen. So we worship an unknown God when we put God on the same level as other objects of worship. That's what they were doing. They had these altars. They had these structures. They had all these pagan things going on in Athens. And they wanted to put God on the same plane. Just build an altar. So no other God is left out. Paul says, I want to declare to you this God. And I want to also today declare to you this God. Ah, come on. Many of us will say, Pastor, I am not in idolatry. But are you sure? Let me, let me find what idolatry is. It is worship of idols or any created object or image. It is extreme admiration, love and reverence for something or someone. Come on. Anything that takes the place of our adoration of God is an idol. It could be sports. Come on. There are some people when sports going on, don't talk to them. You cannot see them in the house of the Lord because it's sports. Sometimes it's our careers. Sometimes it's family. Come on. Pastor, know that on such and such a day, me and my family has just this to do and that to do. And you, you're not availing yourself to serve in the things of God. Sometimes family can become an idol. The material things you're running after can become an idol. Our very education can become an idol. And very and people that we adore. Come on, that you can't say nothing about them. Hey, there are some persons uh, you can bar talk the pastor all you want. But you see such and such high profile person, if you dare say something about that person, they will eat you up. We are talking about idolatry. Come on, we are talking about uh, something that God hates. In fact, when Paul lists the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5 from verse 19 to 21, he says one of the works of the flesh is idolatry. What is it in us that prompts us to make something out of stone? 
out of wood, hey, out of gold, out of silver, and put it up, and then worship what we have made. It says it's a work of the flesh. Makurabasai. Hallelujah. In fact, let me jump ahead a bit. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10, when Paul is there talking to them about eating food and eating meat offered to idols, hear what he says. He says, but I say to you that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to the demons and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with demons. He said before in verse 19 of 1 Corinthians 10, he says, what say I then? That the idol is anything or that, that which is offered in sacrifice to idol is anything? He said the idol is nothing really. What they're doing is worshiping demons. A stone, Makurabasa, he cannot hear you. If you read scripture, for, uh, Psalms 135 from verse 15, it says that the idols of the nations, they are but silver and they are gold. They are the works of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. You hear idols speak. Wood cannot speak. Silver cannot speak. Gold cannot speak. Concrete cannot speak. He says they have ears, but they do not hear. We can cry unto them all we want. We can be like the prophets of Baal huh? in first king that challenged Elijah huh? and they could cut themselves. They could cry until from morning to evening. They have ears. They cannot hear our prayers, our cry. They have ears. He says, no, they have eyes. They cannot see. Nor is there any breath at all in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them. Yes, everyone who trusts in these idols will be like them. Psalms 97 verse 7 says that all those be ashamed who serve graven images. Who boast themselves of idols. Worship God. All you gods. Worship God. Isaiah 45 20 says, who prays to a God who cannot save? We are told to worship God. In fact, God told his people in Exodus 20 from verse 3 says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in the heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them for I the Lord your God. I am a jealous God. I'm visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children on the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. God says if you're going to worship other things and put them on the same level with me, you hate me. Worship me alone. When Jesus was tempted by the devil after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights and he was hungry and the devil tells him, come on, I will give you all of these kingdoms if you will worship me. Jesus said, don't get tied up. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, you must worship God and him only shall you serve. There's no other person deserving of our worship but God Almighty. When Peter went in Cornelius' house and about Acts chapter 10 thereabout and Cornelius wanted to bow down and worship, Peter says, don't do that, I'm just a man. I want to warn us, hallelujah, I want to warn us by the Spirit of God, hallelujah. Men, come out of the way and let God get his worship. Pastors and leaders like myself, it's good that we could serve the Lord and we could be mediators between God and his people. But let us not take the worship that is due to God and God alone. I want to encourage people of the living God. Love us. Pray for us. But worship belongs to God Almighty. Worship does not belong to man. Your worship does not belong to objects. Your worship does not belong to angels. Revelation chapter 22 from about verse 8 and 9. When John was so moved with all the things that the angels showed him, John wanted to worship him. The angels said, don't do that. He says, listen to me. Let me read it for you. Let me see if I can make, let me get it for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the time goes so quickly. Hallelujah. Before we get going. Hallelujah. 
We want to, we, 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 the time goes so quickly. Come on. It goes so quickly. Verse 8, I, John, saw these things, Revelation 22, and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship. I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me all these things. John was so amazed. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am your fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. He says, Worship God. Worship God. And we could get into a long discussion about whether we should worship Jesus. But if you read your Bible, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6, it tells them clearly. And again, he bringeth the firstborn into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Matthew chapter 2, when Jesus was born, uh, come on, in Bethlehem of Judea, the Bible says the wise men uh, looked for him to worship him. Uh, and when they found him, uh, they worshipped him and presented him gifts. Uh, when he was resurrected from the dead, uh, in Matthew chapter 28, uh, his disciples found him and they worshipped him. Because they realize uh, that he is God. Just as John 1 declared uh, that in the beginning of uh, God, uh, that he was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The same was God. Deserving of our worship. Why should we worship God? Look at what Paul says to them in Athens about this God. He says, I'm going to present this God to you because you don't know him. Paul did not know him either. And Paul was zealous persecuting Christians. But then when Paul got a revelation of who this God that he said he thought he was serving really is. Paul says, first of all, I want you to know in verse 24, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth. He dwelleth not in temples made with hands. He says three things about God. He is the creator of heaven and earth. Come on. Those who figure they are learned. Yes, I have my degree. Yes, I, 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 I'm pursuing all kind of post-secondary training. Those who have come to the point to believe that they know. I mean, these people he are talking to are learned people. Come on. I would, they are philosophers. So they have a lot of wisdom. And yet, in the midst of all their wisdom, they do not know God. And the, the location that they are is a location that is given into idolatry. It shows the folly of man's wisdom. That's why Paul writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says that the, the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. You have all this learning and yet you have altars that you worship stone and silver and wood. And you think that's wisdom? <laughs> Father, help us. He says he's the creator. The Bible tells us indeed that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. There are those who would come and say to you, no, we evolved. Where is the proof? Primates are still here. Humans are still here. He says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 27, he says, and let us make man in our image and likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air. Let them have dominion over every creeping thing. God has made us. Come on, the psalmist says in Psalm 100, verse 3, know ye not that the Lord, he he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We did not evolve from no primate. I'm coming to announce to you that there is a creator, the self-existing word who made man in his image and likeness, who is a jealous God who wants us to worship him and him alone. That's why he goes on to say in him we live and move and have our being. All things came into existence by this God. He is the creator. That, that word means that he is the only one who can make something out of nothing. And the Bible tells us in Genesis that God spoke and the world came into existence. God spoke and created. 
And the Bible is completely telling us that. The God you serve has made you. That's why Paul says that we are his offspring. Look at your beautiful self. Look at what you are able to do. Look at how the human mind can process information. Look at how we operate with emotions and feelings. And we, we mad when things don't go right. And we have all of this. You are not stone. You are not wood. Come on. You are not metal. You are not gold. Why would you think that, that your God is such? Look at your fine self. You must realize that somebody has taken his time to make you. David says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous God are your works. And my soul knows right well. The Bible is riddled with scriptures that tell us. Job 33, 4, Job says, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Isaiah 44, 24 says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and the one who formed you from the womb, I, the Lord, am the maker of all things, stretching out the heavens by myself and spreading out the earth all alone. Nehemiah 9 and 6 says, You alone are the Lord. Lord, you have made the heavens, the heaven of heavens with all their hosts, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to all of them and the heavenly hosts bow down before you. Revelations 4 and 11 says, worthy are you, Lord, and our God. Why is he worthy? To receive glory and honor and power for you created all things. And because of your will, they existed and they were created. Father, we bless you in this place. Hallelujah. God, we honor you in this place. As a, oh, Lord, as we sense your strong presence in this place, we magnify your name. King of kings, Lord of lords, ancient of days, make yourself known to your people, Father God. Make yourself known to your people, mighty God. Make yourself known to those who don't know you, God, that they too can have this revelation of who you are. Father, we bless you. God, I just want to use this time to adore you, to extol you, to honor you, Father, who have created all things and give us an opportunity to repent, to change our minds, to change our minds about worshiping of idols and worshiping of men and worshiping of our careers and worshiping of our houses and worshiping of our cars and worshiping our relationship and putting up other things in front of God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, even on behalf of this nation, we repent Lord of Trinidad and Tobago where we have not exalted the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and still asking you to bless this nation. Father, have mercy upon us as a people. Have mercy upon Trinidad and Tobago, God. Have mercy upon us in our households, God, where the name of Jesus is not exalted. Father, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, God. We repent and we turn and we put you first. We put you back in the place of honor. We put you back, God, first in our lives. We put you back as the God who alone is to be worshipped in Jesus' name. This is all the time we have for living by the word. I want to thank you for staying tuned and encourage you to learn the word, love the word, to live the word. Till next time, stay strong. God bless you. Bye-bye.